Okay, so <laughs> let, first of all, you had um, you had Kansas City in this game, and your reasoning was a lot like mine. Yeah, I I picked the Chiefs to win because of Patrick Mahomes, <laughs> and, and that was it. <laughs> there was no other analysis. The week before, I was not sure about his ankle, and I'm like, Cincinnati might, might I was get the, this I done. I was the same way. Yeah, I was like, Cincinnati might get this done. And then yep. when he d- when Mahomes did what he did in that game, I was like, I'm not doing it again. I don't care how many pro bowlers. I don't care, you know, their record. I don't care what happened. I was like, Mahomes, if someone can do it, if someone could put on the cape, it is Patrick Mahomes. One of the things Eagle fans are not addressing, and maybe because it's painful, on two different red zone plays, they didn't have a defender within 10 yards. They got out coached. And I, Sariani had a good game plan. Defensively, they were, you know how hard it is, Will, in the red zone? It's ridiculous, yeah. To the, be open by 12 yards. Well, it's hard. No, it's not hard to be open in the red zone because what happens is in the red zone, the field is wider than it is longer. So there's more, there's more width for them for offense to play with. And right, I think the players talking about they they scored a touchdown on the same play, one to each side, both and wide open, both wide. Because here's what's hard is that they were running motion all game, right? Yeah. The jet motion. You have zoom motion, which is just the receiver goes across. You have jet motion where he is sprinting across. You have yeah. ZN where he is jogging in zoom motion. You have time to adjust because he's not sprinting across. Okay, I'm gonna stay with it, or I'm gonna rock and roll a slingshot it. In this case, they kept running jet motion. And so what happened was the key is on jet motion, you, you still have to keep your eye on the guy. And we always say we don't really pass it off until they pass the tackle or the center. But jet motion, you have to go now. So the fact that they kept anticipating, anticipating the jet motion, they got it all game. They're like, okay, let's communicate this early so we can be on it and stop it on the other side. But what happened was the receivers did a great job of sprinting so once the DB took the eye off, boom, they turn around and it was it was wide open. It was just it was a great game planning, setting them up all game long. OK, so you're a DB. Uh, I do not like the rugby scrum. I think it's not in the spirit of the game. I think the NFL has tweaked rules forever. I give the Eagles credit for finding a loophole. Now it's up for the IRS to close the, the loophole. And this is what teams do. I mean, people copied the Wildcat. So you know that that was hiking the ball to a running back. Right. But you know everybody in the league next year is going to use this six times a game. I don't like it. It's not good for offense. I think guys could get hurt. I don't think this is what football is about. How do you view it? I think the scrum is football. But I heard that what the Eagles are doing, they're, they're like rolling, starting. It's almost like they're, they're all offsides is what they're doing. Like the ball's not snapped, but they're taking off. So I think that's the issue. I think Cam Haywood... You uh, like that play. Man, I mean, it is what it is. Teams will start using this on third down, second down. That's not what the league wants. Well, man. then the league should fix it, but I, I don't have, like, a huge issue. Now, if guys are all size and are getting a rolling start, then, then okay. Well, I that's get, illegal. That's il- Exactly. That's illegal in that part. Okay, so you have experience as a giant. My feeling about New York has always been this. New York's hard, even for the wealthy. You're waiting in line. Traffic is hard. Going to games is hard. The weather's harsh. It's expensive. New York is different than the West Coast. Our weather's good. You can hide in Malibu. Nobody sees you. A lot of people work off hours in Hollywood. It's an easier city. So in New York, they just want you to care deeply. If you win, they love you. If, if you lose, they'll defend you. But you got to be all in on this crap. It took them an hour and a half to get to the stadium. That's why there's a lot of arguments. Yeah, but, but I'm saying yeah. this, there's an angst in New York. They don't, they'll support you forever. There's no way in hell you could say, you know... Uh, off season, I'm going to go hang out, uh, do some uh, strange ayahuasca, and I'm not going to work with the receivers. I think Aaron would make them better, but that's sort of above the fray. Remember when you go, R-E-L-A-X, nobody wants to hear in New York, relax. They want you to My win. wife doesn't like when I say relax. No, no, no. <laughs> no, right? It, it comes across as condescending. Yeah, like, exactly. You're hyper. You're out of your mind. I'm reasonable. That's what react. So I don't like, I think Aaron would win games and they would like I'll him. say this first of all. I don't, the whole him being too sensitive when he's like, look, if you, basically Aaron said, if you're not talking to me, then the you information is wrong, you know? And so him being too sensitive for New York is, is totally wrong. Like he's not, he's not going to get chewed up. By the New York, if anything, I think the New York media is going to elevate Aaron Rodgers. But what if he says, "I'm not going to work out in the off season"? Well, what, what happened at the end of the season? Did they win? 
No, they lost oh, you to mean the like you, you mean if they if he signed to a new uh, to the Jets and he's like I'm not going to show. Have, it. They have young receivers. He's like, yeah, I'll see him in the season. I'm not going to work out with him. The media would eat him alive. They would. In Green Bay, it's but he would be fine. Rainbow. I think the problem too is it's it's like a double edged sword where it's great to be unbothered by stuff, but everybody's bothered, aren't they? No, I'm saying like he he can say he's unbothered, but people don't like to hear that he's unbothered. It's like. Like you think you're above, you know, or, or you know, or whatever it is. But he's unbothered, and people don't like that. I think it's I think it's a great quality to have to be unbothered. So you think he works in New York? I think he works in New York. I think he, I think he works in New York just fine. Like no issue, everything. Like love Tiki, you know. This is not anything against him, but in terms of him being too sensitive and that he'll get chewed up, he won't work in New York. Like that's that's ridiculous. <laughs> By the way, where do you fall on B enemy? It, that, it is such a mystery. There's right. there's almost something that like we don't know. You know, it, does he interview that bad or does anybody interview that poorly? I mean, it's possible. I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I've seen him talk probably three times at a podium. Always has a smile, kind of a good sense of humor. Right. I mean, he's been around the league for long. I always thought on the podium he's kind of funny. He's kind of likable. He's not like a right he, he's unless not he, harsh. Yeah, unless he truly, like, his main desire is, like, I want to leave and be a head coach, then that's cool. But honestly, life is good. Like, uh, You know what? Can we get Beanie on the show? Put him on tomorrow. I think it's interesting. When I've seen him talk, I think he comes across as, like, likable. I, I don't know so. him. Yeah, I don't know him either. Um, but I th- right now, I'm like, if I'm him, like, life is good. Like, why would I leave Kansas City? To, to, to be a coordinator for Sam Howell. I don't get that right. at why all. Would I, um, like I said, unless his true desire is, like, hey, I want to leave – I want to do my own thing. I want to, you know, go somewhere else. But right now, like, why would I leave? You know, maybe he is the successor. How old is he? How how old is forty something? Is he early fifty? I mean, he's that, like his runway's not ending. Like, yeah, let me let me enjoy this experience. I'm not leaving. I, somebody told he's fifty three. Somebody told me like a couple years ago he wasn't a great interview. But I would say is Matt Patricia. I mean, uh, seriously. Like not everybody's a guy, but, but here's what here's what's hard about the league too is not just for coaches but players as well, and or or even executives. It's it's all personal preference. It is. It's it's who do you, it's who do you want? It's all personal preference. Someone could be super qualified, and obviously this is a huge case in terms of like you know hiring you know African American coaches sure. or, or executives. It's 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 personal preference, and that's and that's what's that's what's very 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 difficult. What worried me a little bit is that uh, the Bears GM worked with him in Kansas City and did not interview him for the job in Chicago. That was weird. You'd bring him over for an interview. Now, duly noted, I was told Bill Polian ran the coaching through the McCaskies. Bill Polian did it, and he knew Eberflus. But I, I thought that was odd. But that that polls that that uh, was it Ryan polls. Ryan polls. Yeah, I yeah. played with Ryan at BC. Oh, you know him? Yeah, I played with him at Boston College. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, did you just drop that right? You didn't lead with that. You buried the lead. I had no idea. Right there. <laughs> we, I didn't know we were going to talk about the Bears. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's now let's stay on the Bears. My <laughs> theory is it doesn't take long to spot greatness or awful. You could tell Zach Wilson early wasn't going to work. I could tell Herbert first half of the first game was good. First I, launch. Yeah. Okay. Justin Fields is neither. He's not terrible and he's not great. It's 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 unknown. I think it's kind of known. It's kind of known. I think he struggles throwing accurately on a consistent level. Do you think he was given an actual like like we got to see like the best of him at any point? I feel like there's been a lot well, of like I got like, 2 years now. I feel like there's been a lot of like experimenting trying to figure out like, what offense okay. can we do. Okay, so here here is my thing. I think Luke Getz he's a pretty good coordinator. But here's what I don't like hearing. He didn't have anything to work with. All right. Cole Komet's a better tight end than anybody the Giants have. And Mooney is great. Thank you. And Chase Claypool and Mooney would both start for the Giants. PFF has the Bears O-line ranked 14th, the Giants 30th. Herbert's outstanding running back. Well, their, their two backs are Bs. Saquon's an A, but they have serviceable backs. So they have serviceable backs, a better tight end, a better receiving core, and a better O-line than the Giants. And the Giants got into the playoffs in a tougher division and won a playoff game. I'm tired of hearing about he's got nothing. Mooney's out. He's probably a two, but he's an outstanding two. I love Mooney, yeah. And and so Cole Komet's good. Claypool came there and disappeared. I'm not saying I'm 60-40. Justin's going to work. I got two years here. 
They lost 10 straight. He, I think he played eight of the 10. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to doubt it. A little? Two years? Right. Burrow, before Burrow got hit, hurt as a rookie, Bengals O-line was trash. No Jamar Chase. A coach nobody likes, Zach Taylor at the time. He threw for, before he got hurt, he threw for 400 once and 300, I think three times. And he was complete like 65% yeah, but, of his throws. Yeah, but, he, but he's in that category of like, man, he's one of the, he's okay. like, he, he was the for sure can't miss guy. But I'm hearing, so my takeaway is, Two years, here's what I know. He's not that, and he's not terrible. He's somewhere between 11 and 20 in the league. And that's fine. That's a start. That's fine, yeah. But I would make calls on a quarterback 11 to 20. There is no question he's making calls. I think, I would think you the, make calls? Yeah. The, the Bears right now, they, I think where they're sitting at in the draft, they have the league <laughs> hostage. Like, they can do so much right there where they are. And then in terms of... The hard thing too is like what Justin feels like. That's not that's not Ryan Poles' guy, you know. He, right. did, he didn't draft him, so that's why any anything can happen. You know, does he want to? And the cool thing too, you can draft a QB and still build your team. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's the benefit nowadays too. Like back then, you couldn't do that. You draft a quarterback high, you know, is going to light up your po- tear up your pocket. So you can't really build a team around him. So you right. can get your QB and you can still get your pass rusher in this draft and still build your team. If I was Atlanta. I would call today on Justin Fields. In that division, I would call today. Right. Can, no, that makes sense because what, what Mariota did, you know, is was, in, in Tennessee. Right. So you'd have you have a baked in perfect backup to his style. And you have an offensive coach. So Justin now gets an offensive coach. So much, you don't like Ritter? Is that what it is? Come on. I asked a question. I'm just well, why you gotta be like that though. Like, what, what do you come, think? On, come on. I mean, I mean, seriously, I mean, he asked that question. I mean, what? Justin Fields Ritter. I mean, come on. What are we doing here? We don't know. It's yeah, unknown. I know. I, know. It, I mean, the GM would have to concede, I got Justin uh, Desmond Ritter wrong in yeah, the second Ritter, round last year. And that's the kind of thing, if Fields goes sideways and there's seven well, and nine. Ritter was a second round guy, wasn't he? Still. You, you don't want to concede third. that you whiffed on him. That's how GMs You're lose their jobs, You're not conceding right? your whiff. I mean, if you, well, find out where Ritter was. He wasn't drafted first round. I think it was second round. Let me find out. Third, Third round. round. Yeah. You're not right. conceding squat. He's a backup. I mean, uh, yeah, conceding you made a mistake is Zach Wilson. Well, he's he's given been given two years. I okay. am I'm telling you. Right, full time starter. I'll, right. I'll make I'll make <laughs> it was the second pick. Uh, let me make an argument for Justin Fields. Atlanta's got an offensive coach. A v- I like Arthur Blank way better than the owners of the Bears. Um, the division's significantly weaker. I think Atlanta's better for Justin Yeah, the Fields. South is wide open. It is wide open. You look Oops. at the Falcons receivers, Will? They're, oh, uh, you could, it's uh, called the draft. About as bad as the Bears receivers. It's called, it's called the draft. That's, what, that's why you have the draft. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.